Hear that roar of thunder Hear those tires scream Is every boy's hero in the right spot so it doesn't jump off when the fuel starts pumping. Something like that. The other side hasn't taken as much. Ugh. On the menu this morning, <coughs> the chef has a nice steak and cheese travel pie. Uh, because the only other pie left in there was a uh, just a classic beef coals and any of them any of them pre-made frozen pies, there's got to be something that add flavour to the beef, whether it's cracked pepper, cheese, or onion. See that? Rightio. Let's head off. Oh. Brakes off first would be helpful. It would be great one morning just to be able to jump in it and fly up there and not have to worry about getting fuel or putting that blue in it. It's one of the little things about this run that irks me, the fact that uh, I've got to travel the further distance and have the shit time to do it and uh, the Melbourne driver doesn't feel it, doesn't put that blue in it, just picks it up, does the run, comes back and drops it off. Doesn't even unload it, I have to unload the load myself. But I suppose that's why on an earlier, earlier videos where I've complained about having the weight at drop off points, um, that single drop in Fishwick for example, it's because I'm on a, I'm on a set run, set, uh, set pay for the run. Um, that run I get X to do. If it's a cream cream job, up and back, eight and a half hours, that's great. If um, if uh, <laughs> you got to hang around like that, and next minute it's a twelve-hour day, you're still getting paid the same amount of money. That's why uh, that's why the job should be paid by the hour across the whole industry. But that's uh, that's getting sorted out government at the moment so we'll see what happens out of that but new window new windscreen 
holy shit. I had to check the uh, license plate of the truck this morning when I come in just to make sure it was the same truck because I climbed in and I can see. I don't think the window's ever been as clean as what it was this morning. And uh, yeah, now it's, uh, it's like it's not even there, so. Now, I've had the scouring pads for a while to use on it, but I'm hesitant to use them around that crack because one, I didn't want to put too much pressure on the crack itself. And two, I didn't want to slide my hand over the crack and get a nice big sliver of glass in my finger because that would be, uh, no, nah, not dealing with it. But, uh, anyway, start the video, pleasantries out of the way. You know the drill, we're going to shut her off now and uh, head north.
Rightio. Had a um, GPS error with the logbook there. Sometimes you hit to uh, quick to hit the um, what K's you've done and flicker into work or into rest, but uh, don't don't double check to make sure it uh, <laughs> it recorded where you were, or where you are. But anyway, hello guys. We are finished in Canberra. March, 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 March. It's good things start to quiet off and quite off now, so as you would have seen, I wasn't fully loaded, which is always handy. I've also got a cream run today, it's just the two drops and straight back to home, so um, because I got 15 minutes at each spot, I shouldn't need to stop again until I get home, because it'll be under the eight hours, eight and a half hours, but we'll see how we go, I'll probably stop at Tarkata for a coffee anyway. Another sunny morning in Canberra, for the most part. <laughs> it's been getting down, I think it was down to nine yesterday, so it is cooling off. And I've got a, uh, a jumper and a pair of pants behind the seat just in case it gets too too cold. But sometimes it's not the coolness that gets you, it's the bloody wind. It can feel a lot colder than it actually is. But So, um, March. Not just March, at all. So a uh, significant month. It marks one year. Uh, I think it was... March 18th when I started with this company and got back on the highway after uh, just over three years off work and maintenance in abattoirs. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I'm not turning on nothing. <laughs> yeah, back on the highway. Now, I know I've mentioned earlier, uh, I, think I got off the highway in 2018 just Sick of going to Melbourne, Melbourne traffic, all the road works down there. I think there was a Tuller, Tuller widening going on at the time. Uh, work on the Monash. And just that, plus traffic. Plus uh, going into the brewery at uh, CUB at Abbotsford. Just very... Uh, <laughs> not very hard, but just, yeah. Gets, to, gets on the nerves. Especially when you are you're sitting there loading, loaded, doing paperwork, and you hear over the radio there's a prang, prang or something wrong on the Monash or the Tuller, and you just realise that she's going to be a long day, a long slog just to get out of Melbourne anyway. But yeah. So yeah, I'd had had enough. Um, also, the job I was on, they. Um, the contract was up and someone else had gotten the contract so I wouldn't be able to keep on going off the kegs. Um, the company I was with at the time, they got a pretty big setup up Coffs Harbour area. Uh, the boss is down here with... had no trucks down here anymore. He uh, bought two second hand ones for the run and was going to... Uh, offered to put me on B-double and do Toll Express out of Eastern Creek down to Altona and... Anyone that knows that run, it's um, it's not one you want to do while you've got a family, especially a young family at the time, and it's not one I wanted to do because I didn't want to be working six days a week, towing a double up the highway. So I um, I spent a couple of weeks looking around trying to find another company that was doing runs to Canberra because I knew Canberra. Um, four hours up, four hours back, it's sort of just that good distance away, distance away from home, you can do it all on a standard logbook, and for the most part, running up and down the Hume is pretty easy, if there's issues, I'd say 70% of the Hume, if there's a crash, there's always some sort of road that you can get around it, it might take a little bit longer, but you still get around it. Other occurrences, <laughs> you're stuck there until the crash is clear, and if it's a fatal, you're in trouble. But yeah, I looked around and I'd put a 
job application in at the abattoirs just as a backup and um, I think it was about three or four weeks starting to get desperate for money and uh, yeah the abattoirs rang me back and said hey can you come and come and uh, is that camera doing up there that's a wiggle wiggle Ugh. can you come and uh, do a medical and stuff so that was the end of the transport into uh, food production manufacturing so fast forward to uh, the start of last year, no, end of, end of 2021, because all 2022, yeah, end of 2021, um, I had enough of that, wanting to get out of it, wanting to get back in an excavator, operating, um, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot of local companies, you um, subdivision earthworks all that sort of stuff they're only paying 26 bucks for an operator even if you got um, GPS and form work experience batter buckets that sort of stuff which is low for an excavator driver granted like the biggest diggers around are probably a 13 tonner just because of um, getting in and out of new estates and all that sort of stuff so didn't want to do that end up finding the job in a scrap heap where I was on 35 bucks now to operate an excavator and it just had a set of grabs on it and occasionally a bucket for doing some clean up work so that was good and really loved that scrap scrap yard job back on the digger again some of the shit <laughs> some of the shit people throw away um, got two cars got a big dual axle Windsor caravan out of it Weber barbecues, chainsaws, all sorts of, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. But there, come March last year, that uh, as much as I was loving the operating, um, I just couldn't deal, couldn't deal with the public in that sort of setting anymore. And um, yeah, gave notice then. I was driving, loading B doubles with scrap singles. Um, back and back in the B double all over the joint, and even though I was good at it and kept on asking, "You sure you haven't got your double license?" So I said, "No," and I don't want it. And um, yeah, it's reversing. Once you get the concept, once you know what you're doing, it's much like back in a truck and dog. It's just a lot longer. And I think, as I said in the uh, one of the Yas drop videos. You bugger up just pull forward a meter or two straighten up a bit and then go again don't you don't have to go 100 meters forward and yeah anyway <laughs> so that was over and um i'd actually the day i rang this company they had an ad on facebook looking for a permanent uh camber driver um pretty much half an hour after i rang them the uh the avatars rang me back with an offer for night night shift, afternoon shift on maintenance and if um, if it had been reversed I might have nearly taken it but, uh, and it's not, not to say this runs bad or anything um, I'll say it pays good it pays good and at the moment that's one of the main reasons I'm still here it's just dealing how much the highways changed in these uh, five years, five, six years, there's um, shit going everywhere, of course. Granted, um, I'm a couple of hours earlier in the morning than what I used to be. Uh, truck bays are full if you want to stop for a toilet break or something. There's been a couple of times I've gone to pull into Yass, the big Yass servo at three o'clock in the morning and you're lucky to get in and out of the joint. I go past Dog on the Tucker Box, the shell there at Gundagai and Wednesday, Thursday night, there's been blokes commenting how much worse the highway is on a Friday night. I can only imagine Friday night just how full those service centres are with trucks. And you go past the Tucker Box, the shell there and you wonder how the hell you even get around the back and find your way out because people just park wherever they can. 
all your little parking bays, Jugyong up further, same thing, just full, full of trucks and there's often a B double or two on the entry or exit ramps, nearly back on the highway just because they haven't got enough room. So I'm just glad I don't have to do overnight and pull up somewhere like that for a break, but it does make it hard if you do need to stop for a uh, toilet, get a bit drowsy, make a coffee, whatever. Um, yeah, she's, she's getting hard to do that. <laughs> and then there's the drivers. The drivers are still as bad as they've always been car-wise. Um, some of the truck drivers, and they say it's because kids aren't allowed in trucks anymore, so stuff's not getting taught. I wouldn't want kids in trucks these days, one for safety. Learn what the bad truck drivers are teaching them, so it's not all of them. Unfortunately, it does appear to be some from another country that have issues. I only heard from a police officer in the highway patrol last week at the BP at Barnawaffa, there was a B double driver intercepted. Um, I'm not going to say what country he was from, but he was had no license, had no truck license, had no logbook. He was driving a B double. Up, he'd left Melbourne and drove all the way to BP at Wodonga um, on a car license. So that's what we're dealing with out here on the road. Plus, uh, yeah, plus the cars. So. And I've got myself a, um, what would you call it, health insurance policy, funeral policy, whatever you want to call it. I'll give a company money just in case something happens to me anyway, because this is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. You see, every, no, every night, truck's going off somewhere. Now, granted, that truck's going off. You're not tired. You're not going to go off. But all that truck has to do is come through the middle at you. And, uh, yeah, you're buggered. <laughs> or have something happen beside you. That's just uh, the unfortunate fact of the matter. And we've got some uh, hot air balloons. I think they've pretty much got all the hot air balloons in Canberra up in the air. <laughs> Although you're going to see a few bugs. Actually, you're probably going to see all bugs, but... I've um, never seen that many in the air before. That's uh, quite a few. I don't know what's uh, what's going... Oh, I probably should have an indicator on. Whoops. <laughs> Stop talking. I reckon there would have been 50 balloons in the air then. Going up. Come up here every day. I should know the name. I'm pretty sure it's Anzac Parade. From uh, Lake Burley Griffith up here to the Wall Memorial. So yeah, one year, one year back on the highway. But, um, don't know, as I said, the pay is good, but the rest of it. Uh, as you've seen, a lot of little job, drops I've had to do <laughs> on the way home. Some of it planned, some of it unplanned. Some of it you know where you're going, some of it you're just going off Google Maps, which is not uh, what you want to be doing in a semi in a little town. But what do you do? Unfortunately, every run can't be cream like it is today. I suppose that uh, that could lead into the channel too. Kind of feel like I'm just giving you the same old, same old. Just Canberra, drop here, getting fuel, washing the bugs off the windscreen. That's uh, that's what the run is. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I suppose not unfortunately, but when you think of trucking in Australia. When you look up at truck in Australia, no matter where you are in the world, road trains is always what comes to mind. People want to see the big trucks towing the big trailers or uh, or heavy haulage. And uh, and this isn't it. So probably going to take a couple of weeks off posting videos just to uh, 
just get me bearings and see see what the views do. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic just in how in the views themselves. Um, it's me other channel, the camping camping adventure channel. I've got travel. It um, took me five. It's, I've been doing that for five years just to get to uh, get to where I am now with this channel and this channel's only been up for five weeks so well, a bit more than five weeks but you get the picture it's been fantastic reading through the comments talking to you guys uh, looking at the data the analytics for the channel at the moment it seems to be all my age and a bit older 45 40 to 65 age age bracket and male so I'm guessing most of the blokes that are watching this are fellow truck drivers. I know from some of the comments, a couple of blokes are looking to get into truck driving, but a lot of the commenters are uh, other truck drivers that have different runs. Which is why I've tried to uh, not be as suck-eggy or um, sort of describing a lot of stuff I'm doing because if you're a driver, you know what I'm doing. You know what I'm not doing, and <laughs> you know what I'm not doing right. And that's the other thing too, just having the eye on you, doing your job. Sometimes you'll do things that you don't, oh, the limb was low. You'll do things you don't realise and, uh, yep, some, some will spot it. That's good old YouTube, they'll always spot the, uh, the good and the bad things you do. I love scaring people here, just come out wide. <laughs> Even though they know you can't come across the medium, Adam, you still see some people sit there and, Ooh. It is a little bit later this morning. We're coming up at 20 past seven. Again, as I've said in the previous uh, video, normally after 7 o'clock I don't come through the city, but as you see, it's uh, not too bad. The last couple of mornings I have, just because, again, they're still resealing the top of the Federal Highway, where um, you turn off to Madura Parkway to do the, uh, the truck bypass around, the heavy vehicle bypass around. This is still a B-double route through here. So, normally... Uh, Normally this intersection here is your biggest hold up, especially with that building construction going on over there. They've got both lanes open now, but when they close that lane like you seen the other day, it can get a bit tight, get a bit tight through here. And the trams. That's one thing I've noticed, the way the uh, traffic lights change nowadays. Your, um, your straight through traffic, the green will stay on a lot longer, especially if there's a tram approaching. But we'll just sit here and wait. Rightio, let's go. That's a siren, where's he coming from? Oh, they're over there, Ambos. Oh, shit falling down everywhere. See, I don't mind. Same thing, so I do this, do this longer um, full trip run on a monthly basis. What I've been, uh, what I've been showing, has been the single drop stuff I've, that I've been doing on a daily basis for the most part. Um, the Yass seed drop, I've been back there two or three times since. There was one spout there one time. It was, it was three days in a row. I was back there, so back straight in, nice and easy.
and now we've um, now we've hit 500 subs. I'd love to get to a thousand and more eventually. So I don't. I, I think I mentioned a while back. I did not expect so many so many views on the channel, so many views on the video, so many subs and so many comments. I was only expecting a dozen or so to uh, to actually watch, which is why I've sort of doubled down now on uh, not showing company names on trucks and that sort of thing, just because so many eyes are on it. And I'm getting some uh, energetic waves from other truckies and that on the highway as I go past them. If you are waving to me, good on you. Um, again, my radio's stuffed, so if you've tried, I know there's been a couple of times I've heard my name called on the radio, but I just can't can't answer it. But <laughs> unless you're uh, right beside me, right behind me, following me, or right about there somewhere, um, you'll get a sentence out of me, and then once you're gone, I'll just completely lose reception. Come on, run across and jaywalk. Give me a common thing. You wait there. Don't give way to her. Got to be a politician. <laughs> Get past this bike before we've got to turn onto the Barton. Oh, bike lanes, love them. I'm supposed to give them room, but I've got a car behind me, so I'll sit on the dotted line. Into it. Come on, trigger. So we'll see what happens with the comments in this one anyway. If, um, if you don't mind. Keeping on the way we're going, I can't. I can't show you what I'm not doing. I can't show you pulling four trailers when I'm only pulling one. At the moment, I'm still getting a unique or a new single drop at least one each week that I can film and that's why I've been able to go weekly since uh, since the end of January anyway got this intersection here and the big gun guard round about to get around and the uh Lights at hall, and then we've got a clear line to yes. No Bunnings today. Had a uh, seven pallet from Bunnings Aubrey to pick up yesterday, which just went back to the depot. And that was it. And I guess that is it. So, we'll get going down the road a bit, and... Um, Might stop at, uh, at Conroy's for a uh, make me own coffee. Save 13 bucks from Tarkata. Because now if I pull in there, well, it's been it's been so random. 
last two Fridays I've pulled in wanting a salad roll with me coffee. No, no salad rolls. Uh, yeah, no salad rolls made. We've just made a shitload of wraps of all the same stuff that'd be in the salad roll. So instead of paying eight bucks for a roll, you're paying thirteen dollars for a wrap, which no, <laughs> no, not doing, not doing. Just end up paying. I have six bucks or six fifty. No, it'd be six because it's um, ten bucks for a sandwich and coffee. All right, guys. This has gone long enough. I'll uh, see you down the hymn somewhere. It's going to be a bit noisy here, I'm sorry folks. Unfortunately, the um, not many spots along the Hume Highway you can get all the way off the road in a parking bay, at least anyway. Get to hear some nice trucks pulling up the hill at least anyway. So once again we just got our Makona caramel lattes. <laughs>
try and get in without the wind blowing her away, which is always fun. They're doing, re <coughs> doing resealing work on the northbound side of the highway too, which is why so many of the trucks are going so slow up the hill. Down to 60 or 40, right to the bottom of the hill, and then you got to try and get going, which, <laughs> unless you're empty, it's not going to happen. Mac. Whoa. Bulldog Mac. Just like that. And the good thing about these double walled um, thermoses and that too, it'll be gun to guy before I can drink this because it'll be too hot. <laughs> That's why a little bit of milk in there helps just cool it down a bit. Oh shit, we've got a big one coming in here. All right, we'll get out of his way. Mega load, but it's just as wide. Lumber on that big 
you're good with the trees along here. Stop at the top of the next hill for a piss. <laughs> gonna have to hold until we get closer to home now. See how much um, time I can make up ahead of them. Tonsils are floating, I can't hold on anymore. As I said before, I need to go when I come around those oversides, but I'm still an hour away from Albury. Now, about 30k out, I'm hoping I've got enough headway in front of them to uh, get this done quickly and get back on the highway before they get here. Even though the next 20k is pretty wide, so it shouldn't be too hard to get around them.
couldn't hear him on the IHF, so I'm hoping that middle's far enough ahead. I think we're successful. Well, here comes the other Pentagast truck. Success! Great success! Rightio, so that's been the video for the, uh, the month of March. Bit of a cream, or the ultimate cream run <laughs> when it comes to this job anyway. Uh, get a bit overcast. We're supposed to be out of our heat wave and back to cool temps tomorrow, so it might be time to get some of the, uh, some of the pants and jumpers out of, the, out of storage. But just coming down past Blue Metal. Mullingandra at the old Mullingandra Homestead and Pub. This is where I sit out here on the excavator clearing timber doing the duplication of the highway. Remember being over on the new alignment, rattling along the old Dash 5 Komatsu. Track squealing, cabin shaking, dust, that little fine dust coming out of all the all the rubbers, the window rubbers and that, just choking you. And then going to push a tree down over there and disturbing a beehive. <laughs> and running for the hills because the front window of the excavator was open. And then all the bees getting stuck to the fly screen on the uh, on the rear radiator because all the, the fan was sucking the air through and the, the bees were getting stuck to the outside of the radiator. Good times. All for a little bit of honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. I've been Brad, once again, running Highway 31. I hope you enjoyed the episode. At the moment, like 80, 85% of people watching this aren't subscribed. If you like what you're seeing, even if you don't watch it every week, if you only watch a video here and there, just please consider hitting that subscribe button so I've got a better idea of... Uh, how many people are watching, how many people are subscribing, that sort of thing. And it's a real gauge on how much you're enjoying the content. But until the next video, I'll uh, get down here. I've got four pellets done to take off. No, two pellets to take off. And uh, that'll be it for the day. Thanks for watching, guys.
Yeah. 